Hi, this is Thomas Plunkett. This is my review of Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas Antonopoulos. Um, this is part of the Understanding Crypto series. So Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas is probably the best Bitcoin textbook that currently exists. The second edition of this book has been out since 2017. Uh, it would be nice to see a third edition sometime in the next couple of years. Uh, the book is solid, both from a content perspective as well as from a technical perspective. There are programming examples in the textbook, but you don't need to be a programmer to understand the book's content, and you don't need to actually work through the programming exercises. Um, the book also has a supporting GitHub site, and the GitHub materials are available under a Creative Commons license. Um, in fact, let's show you the Creative Commons license. It's an attribution share alike license. Um, and you can view a copy of that license out of the link. Um, and both the video review I'm about to um, doing as well as the book on its GitHub site are covered by this license. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift over to taking a look at that GitHub site. So let me go ahead and do that. So here's a look at the GitHub site that Andreas has created. Uh, it's github.com slash Bitcoin book, Bitcoin book. Uh, in here, you can see he's got the code references, images, theme, tools. Um, then he's got the various chapters uh, as ASCII documents, as well as copyrights and licenses and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, and here's a little description of it, you know, mastering Bitcoin, reading the book, the 12 chapters as well as when it was published and so on. Uh, it's also been translated in a number of different languages and so on. Uh, so let's take a look at that list of chapters right there. So he, uh, Andreas has provided us with 12 chapters in this textbook. Uh, chapter one is an introduction where he kind of goes through what is Bitcoin, talks about the history of Bitcoin, and then talks, uh, provides some examples of how different users can use Bitcoin. You know, like one person might be a user who's using it to make purchases. Another person might be a shopkeeper who's using it to sell stuff and receive payment and, and so on. Um, chapter two dives into how Bitcoin works. Uh, in chapter two, Andreas goes through transactions, blocks, mining and blockchain in general. He talks about, goes, dives deep into Bitcoin transactions, talks about how to construct a transaction, uh, talks about how the role mining plays and how to mine transactions in blocks, and then finally, how to spend a transaction. In chapter three, uh, Andreas dives into Bitcoin Core, which is the reference implementation of Bitcoin. So he talks about the Bitcoin development environment, how to compile Bitcoin Core from the source code, how to run a Bitcoin Core node. Uh, he talks about the API for interacting with Bitcoin Core. And then he talks a little bit about alternative uh, clients, libraries, and toolkits for Bitcoin. In chapter four on keys and addresses, this is really our deep dive chapter on how do addresses work in relation to the public key, private key infrastructure that Bitcoin is based on. So he uh, explains addresses, he explains how keys and addresses are implemented in C++ with, with both C++ and Python examples. And then he talks about some of the things you can, advanced things you can do with keys and addresses. In chapter five, Andreas dives into wallets. He gives a brief, uh, wallets are sort of like the Bitcoin client or cryptocurrency client to enable you to interact and manage these keys and addresses we talked about in chapter four. So he dives in and provides a brief technology overview for wallets, then he dives into the technology details behind wallets. In chapter six on transactions, Andreas uh, you know, provide, provides a detailed explanation of how transactions work in Bitcoin. Uh, he talks a lot about transaction outputs and inputs because in Bitcoin, the unspent transaction output is how you're actually gonna spend your money. Um, and so he talks about transactions, outputs, and inputs, and then he uh, starts diving into scripting with Bitcoin and how you write a tra uh, uh, transaction script using the Bitcoin script language. 
Uh, and then he also talks a little bit about how you sign a transaction, which is done through uh, digital signature technology, um, in particular, the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm. In chapter seven, we probably get about as deep into programming as any of the chapters are in this textbook. Um, this chapter seven is on advanced transactions and scripting. So we're gonna take uh, the scripting language you saw a little bit of in chapter six and dive into a lot more details on it. We'll cover multi-signatures where you might wanna have a transaction where multiple people sign the transaction. We'll talk about uh, pay to script hashes, talk about time locks. You know, if you can have a transaction, there's gonna be a certain amount of time before the transaction can close. Uh, we'll talk about scripts with uh, flow of control. Uh, and we'll also talk about uh, segregated witness and other, cap other complex scripts. Uh, in chapter eight, the Bitcoin network, Andreas dives into peer-to-peer -peer network architecture uh, and then explains how Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer network architecture. Talk about the different types of nodes and roles in the Bitcoin network. Talk about Bitcoin relay networks and network discovery. Uh, and the differences between full nodes and client nodes and so on. And then we'll talk, to, and he also talks about simplified payment verification, which is used often by client side wallets. Um, in chapter nine, the blockchain, we uh, talk about the structure of the blocks in the blockchain. We talk about the block headers, block identifiers. Um, you know, linking blocks in the blockchain all the way back to the Genesis block. I'll also talk about how Merkle trees are used uh, in the implementation of the blockchain, um, especially with regards to simplified payment verification. And he also talks about the test blockchains that are available to, uh, in case you uh, want to practice with a Bitcoin blockchain, but you don't want to spend real money in doing your practice. In chapter 10, we dive into mining and how mining is used in Bitcoin's consensus algorithm to secure the, the Bitcoin blockchain and make it so that it's uh, reliable cash that we can rely on and we don't have to worry about first from a computer security perspective. So starts off chapter 10 talking about decentralized consensus and how the different nodes perform independent verification of transactions and why the mining nodes are necessary to secure the network. Talks, he'll talk about how um, the mining nodes aggregate transactions in the blocks and construct the block headers, and then how other mine, mining nodes will mine the block. Um, he'll talk a little about the block reward for successfully mining the block and then validating new blocks. Uh, and then we'll talk about assembling and selecting chains of uh, blocks. Uh, and then the hashing race in general where different uh, nodes are competing to be the first one to win the block reward. Uh, chapter 10 also spends a little bit of time talking about some of uh, the potential attacks on consensus, um, you know, how hackers can attempt to attack the, the Bitcoin blockchain, um, and then also talk a little bit about alternative consensus algorithms. Um, chapter 11 dives deeper into this concept of Bitcoin security and how the Bitcoin blockchain is secured. Uh, we talk a bit about uh, security principles, both from a blockchain perspective, as well as from a user perspective. What are some best practices that users should use in securing their wallets and protecting their cryptocurrency? Chapter 12 on blockchain applications talks about some, you know, some of the things you can do using Bitcoin, uh, talks about colored coins and payment channels and state channels. And the last part of chapter 12 talks about the Lightning Network in you know with regards to payment channels so that's a brief look at what's covered by the 12 chapters in addition to those 12 chapters there's several appendices Let's see if there's a list of these appendices here maybe it's up here um yeah here we go uh there's appendices in here one of the appendices is on the uh, Bitcoin improvement proposals. Another one is on the Bitcoin white paper. A third appendix is on Bitcoin core, uh, the Bitcore. Um, another appendix is on um, transaction script language, and, which is this one. And you got an appendix on the Python uh, PyCoin language. 
And then another ex uh, appendix is on uh, Bitcoin Explorer, which is a way to search the Bitcoin blockchain. So all in all, this is a very comprehensive book. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you can, uh, you can, it's published by O'Reilly. You can buy it from O'Reilly through, you know, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, or any other popular book site or directly on their book site. And you can also read the contents and access the contents through this GitHub site. Uh, and I want to thank O'Reilly for making it available through this GitHub site. That was really gr uh, gracious of them to make it available under a Creative Commons license. So with that, uh, that pretty much concludes what I wanted to show you on this uh, particular site. But obviously, like I said, you know, you can click on each one of these chapters and all the contents are actually available there. So, for example, if I click on chapter one here and bring it up, it brings us to chapter one. And obviously, you can read through chapter one and see this, everything that's provided. Uh, one last aspect that I do want to mention in this textbook, which I actually haven't mentioned yet, is they have a fantastic glossary. So let me see if I can find our glossary here. Um, here's our glossary. Um, again, um, it, it gives you short little definitions of all the different items. Now, you know, sometimes with these short definitions, I might have an idea that, you know, maybe I would prefer if the definition was worded slightly differently. But generally speaking, each one is pretty solid and on point, even if it's slightly different wording from what I might have selected personally. Um, so it's a fantastic glossary to read through. Uh, and I highly recommend that if you're reading this textbook to read through the glossary multiple times um, because, it, you know, and just test yourself. Do you know what all these definitions? Would you have defined it differently? Um, you know, so whether it's address or Bitcoin or block and so on, that's an excellent source of information in addition to all the information that's provided throughout the different chapters. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing that and go back to my slides. So again, uh, I, I really think Mastering Bitcoin is the best te Bitcoin textbook that's been written so far. Uh, I would really like to see a third edition though. It's been four years since the second edition was published. Um, there's been enough new in progress in Bitcoin in those last four years that a third edition is worthwhile. But even having said that, uh, the book is solid from a content and a technical perspective. Um, so that's my review of Mastering Bitcoin by Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, part of the Understanding Crypto series by Thomas Plunkett. So thanks for listening to this video and have a great day.